whole series, but it's also related to the message tonight and the title of the message uh, tonight, uh, Glory to God, is about the prophetic floodgates. And I believe that's something that the Lord has spoken to us. And the emphasis tonight will be up on opening and keeping the floodgates mm -hmm. open. open. And that the prophetic voice is very important in that. We're going to look at uh, some verses about that. Uh, and then the series, uh, we're going to look at, well, what do you do when you have the floodgates open, the outpouring of the Holy Spirit? And we're going to see that uh, there's a lot of uh, the gifts begin to uh, be used intensely. And, uh, and we see a lot of re impact. Uh, from the gifts and using the gifts when the glory is poured out. And so this is tonight, it's about how to get the glory uh, poured out. And and I want you to know, first of all, that God's not withholding it. It's you and I, we have a role to play. We need to partner with him uh, because in um, Luke chapter 12, and I'm going to ask Sherry to read this, we'll find out that it's God's good pleasure uh, to pour out the kingdom and give us the kingdom. So let's read this verse. Luke 12, 32. Fear not, little flock, for it is your father's good pleasure to give you the kingdom. Oh, hallelujah. Now, Amen. It's interesting. It doesn't start, oh, big congregation. It starts out a little flock. Uh, just mm -hmm. the few. Mm -hmm. He's willing to pour it out wherever you are. Just hallelujah. The, just the few. Uh, so it doesn't have to be a big group. Uh, but where there are believers doing what the Bible says to do that are obedient to the word of God, uh, that we're going to see the kingdom being poured out. Now, the kingdom, let's review about the kingdom. The kingdom is the realm of the Holy Spirit where miracles and signs and wonders occur. And that's mm -hmm. why your gifts are going to be operational uh, when we have the outpouring of the kingdom and outpouring of the Holy Spirit. And, and I, I say that it's the realm of the Holy Spirit because uh, the scripture says in Romans 14, 17 that the kingdom is not uh, in food and drink, but it is in righteousness, peace, and joy in the Holy Spirit. So the kingdom is all about the realm of the Holy Spirit. And that, and of course, the Holy Spirit's the one that, uh, that operates the gifts but he operates them through you and me and, and the believers. Amen. And so that's really important. Now, there's two other verses for the series that are going to be very important, and it's about the outpouring. And we're going to see these first in Joel uh, chapter 228 and then in Acts. Now, the reason I want to go to both of them is, although obviously the verse in Acts about the outpouring came from Joel, there are a few words that are different and we need to look at what these differences are. And so I'm going to start with uh, Joel 2, verse 28, Jerry. It will come about after this that I will pour out my spirit on all mankind, and your sons and your daughters will prophesy. Your old men will have dreams, and your young men will see visions. Okay, so a key phrase I want you to see here that's different than the uh, verse in Acts, it says after this. And so we're going to ex examine what happened before. And so we'll know it because after we do certain things, then we're going to get the outpouring. And that's what is critical for this message today mm -hmm. is what do we do first to get the outpouring? Mm -hmm. And then I want to go to Acts uh, uh, 2.17 and let's read it. It's the sister verse. In the last days, God says, I will pour out of my spirit on all people. Your sons and your daughters will prophesy. Your young men will see visions and your old men will dream dreams. Okay. So in both of these verses, we see three things that are going to happen after we have the outpouring. And that's uh, prophecy and it's dreams and it's visions. And so Hallelujah. The, the series will definitely focus on those things. It's going to focus on prophecy. It's going to uh, talk about to how do we prophesy and, and um, uh, give you some background and, and uh, instructions about prophecy and also about interpreting dreams and interpreting visions. So that kind of gives you an overview of the series, what we'll be looking at in the series. 
And so if you're interested in the gifts and operating in the gifts and if you're interested in interpreting dreams, then this series is for you. It's an important series. Now, I started with these uh, two verses about the outpouring of the Spirit, uh, and I, I pointed out the difference as we were uh, bringing them forth that one of them says after this. So there's something that happens mm -hmm. first before the outpouring. And if we go back into Joel chapter 2, uh, and, and I'm just going to tell you what it was, mm -hmm. it's verses 21, 22, and 23. Obviously, those verses come before 28. And so it's after this. And so what did Joel do? Joel's a prophet. Mm -hmm. and, and in verse 21, he prophesied to the land. Mm, hallelujah. And he said, Rejoice, land, and be exceeding mm, glad. Be glad. Mm. And then he prophesied to the wild animals. animals. And he, he, said, he said to rejoice and be glad. And then he prophesied to the people. So you see, there was a, a, an order there. He, he, he prophesied first to the land, then the wild animals, and then. And then he prophesied to the people. So this is real important. Uh, there has to be some prophetic words. There has to be some prophecy. So we're going to see that the prophecy and the prophetic voice is going to bring forth the open heavens. It's going to open open up the heavens. So we've got to be some have some prophesying. But where do we prophesy? Well, you, a lot of people think, well, I, I've got to go to my uh, church congregation and when the pastor calls on me, then uh, I'll stand and, and uh, give a word of prophecy. But I tell you, that's not what Joel said. He said, go to the land, mm, prophesy really to the land, prophesy yeah. to the wild animals. I, I hope you don't have wild animals in your congregation on Sunday morning uh, because he said <laughs> prophesy to that, prophesy to the animals, prophesy to the land. <laughs> Prophesy to the boulders and the trees yes. and, the, and the and the plants. Yes, the, the rivers. Oh, glory to God. This is a different approach to prophecy because what we're going to be doing is opening up the heavens. And so mm. the thing that's going to open up the heavens is the prophetic word. And we see this carried out in the life of John the Baptist. Hallelujah. Oh, so we're going to look, just think about him for a minute. I know this story is very familiar with all of you, but I want you to know that uh, John the Baptist was really in line uh, to be a high priest and, and to be up there in the temple and go into the Holy of Holies. Mm -hmm. that, that's where his heritage was uh, because his father, uh, Zacharias, uh, was in, he was the high priest. He was in the Holy of Holies when the angel spoke to him. Oh, he said he, he's going to have a son and his name, name him John. And so that was his heritage. That's where you would have thought he would have wound up. But I tell you, he was obedient to John 1, 6. Mm -hmm. and, and it says, John 1, 6 mm -hmm. says that God sent him. Oh, hallelujah. Ooh, John was a man sent, mm, sent by, by God. God. Where did God send him? To the wilderness. Whoa, hallelujah. <laughs> Now, what did he do in the wilderness? Well, I'll tell you what prophets do in the wilderness or where they, wherever they are, because the dogs bark, the birds chirp, and the prophets prophesy. Oh, hallelujah. And how did the people know that John was a prophet? Because he's prophesied. Fine. He went down to the Jordan. Hallelujah. And now, I want you to just think about this situation, that, that uh, the Old Testament was written, and God had spoken uh, through times and through the prophets in the Old Testament. Then we went for uh, a, a few hundred years uh, between the Old Testament and the New Testament, and there really we weren't seeing written down what God was saying for that period of time. And so John is is a forerunner, and he's going to start opening up some heavens here. He's going to open up the heavens. So it's more important to him to be obedient to his calling. And where and go where God sent him, then to go up to the temple and be there with the with the scholars and with the, mm. the Pharisees mm. and the Sadducees. It was more important to him, mm. so he went to the wilderness. And, and I want you to know that he began to prophesy mm -hmm. in the wilderness. Yeah. Okay, prepare the way, prepare the way of the Lord, prepare the way. 
prepare the way of the Lord. Valleys be raised up, mountains be brought low. Valleys be raised up, mountains be brought low. Prepare the way, prepare the way of the Lord. Hallelujah. Oh, you did good, too. <laughs> He was prophesying. He went to the wilderness. He could have gone to the temple. You would have thought he was going to go to the temple. His father was high priest. But he went to the wilderness because God sent him down there. He had a message uh, that he was going to proclaim down there. And when he spoke to the people, let's think of what did he say. He said, uh, repent, repent for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. Hallelujah. Oh, glory. He had the same message we have. The, let's bring forth the kingdom. Let's get the outpouring of the Holy Spirit. Let's open the floodgates. Forth, open the floodgates. We've got to do it prophetically. Hallelujah. Mm. And and then let's look at, okay, so let that relates to Second Chronicles 7, verses 13 mm -hmm. and 14. Mm -hmm. If the heavens are shut up, Oh, okay, hallelujah. so for hundreds of years here, a few hundred years, heavens were shut up. We don't see God speaking. We don't have record of him speaking. And so John the Baptist is out there in the wilderness prophesying, just like Joel said, prophesy to the land, prophesy to the wild animals, prophesy to the people. Mm. <clears throat> and so he's out there saying, repent for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. And uh, so... Second Chronicles 7, 13 says, If the heavens are shut up, then if my people who are called by my name will humble themselves and pray and turn from their wicked ways, that's, that's that repentance, see, it's right in there, then what? I'm going to heal here, the land. I'm going to we'll hear from heaven, heaven and heal, heal the, the land. land. So John the Baptist is out there prophesying. Uh, he's telling the people to repent. But he's also wanting the land to be healed. He wants the heaven to be open. And, and what are some of the things he's prophesying? Well, just like Sherry said, prepare the way of the of the Lord. Lord. Uh, but also he said, uh, uh, behold, the Lamb of God that takes away, away the sins, sins of, of the, the world. world. That's yeah. prophecy. That's a prophetic word because God sent him down. He was on assignment there in the wilderness to heal the land, open up the heavens. And, and he begins to prophesy and prophesy incredible things. Behold the Lamb of God that takes away the sin of the world. And he said, uh, I, I baptize you uh, with water, but there's one coming. This is a prophetic word here. Uh, there's one coming after me that's going to baptize you. And, and he, I, I'm not even worthy to unlatch uh, his shoes, but he's going to baptize you with the Holy Spirit and fire. That's, that's a prophetic word. How do you know? How did the people know he was a prophet? Because he was prophesying incredible things. Okay. And so Jesus is drawn there. He's drawn where? Well, you think, well, he's drawn to the temple to start his ministry. No, he's drawn to the wilderness. Oh, hallelujah, because uh -huh. there's somebody down there Oh, that's uh, opening up the heavens. There's somebody down there healing the land that's, that's prophesying oh, to the land, yeah. prophesying yeah. to the animals, prophesying uh, to the people, just like Joel said. And when you do that, then, uh, oh, hallelujah, the heavens are going to be open and, and, mm. the, and the Holy Spirit's going to be poured out. Hallelujah. And, and then, uh, uh, of course, John the Baptist identified uh, Jesus as the Messiah, as the as the Messiah, and, and uh, uh, Jesus said, "Well, baptize me." And and, and Paul and uh, John said, "Oh, I'm not worthy to baptize you, but but listen to this." Jesus said, "Let us do this. Fulfill all right us." See, he, he, Jesus didn't do it on his own. He he needed somebody to be down there prophesying, mm -hmm. prophesying to the land, prophesying oh, to the wild that. animals, and prophesying to, to the people, people and, and getting the heavens opened up and the land healed. And, and then he said, we're going to fulfill all righteousness, you and me. That's what Jesus said, you and me. We're going to fulfill all righteousness. So 
I need you to baptize me. So when he baptized him and he came up out of the water, oh, hallelujah, the heavens were open. And a dove descended. The Holy Spirit descended in the form of a dove. The heavens were open. We hadn't heard anything from the Father. Now the Father's beginning to To speak speak. because it's his pleasure to pour out. out. Oh, hallelujah. Hallelujah. His kingdom kingdom out for it. And he said, this is my beloved son in whom I am well pleased. Now all of a sudden we begin to hear. We begin to hear from the Father where we hadn't heard from the Father for years and years. But now we're beginning to hear because there's somebody out there prophesying. See, when he was a baby, there were people identified as intercessors. There was Anna, an intercessor, and Simeon. Simeon. So, so Jesus didn't come just alone by himself, and now all of this happened just on. He had partners. He had people interceding for him, getting ready for him. And now you've got John the Baptist out there prophesying because that's what a prophet does. And you might say, well, but John never did a miracle. But Jesus said he's the greatest prophet. There's no mm-hmm. no one greater than John the Baptist. Oh, hallelujah. What made him great? Because he is obedient to God. He prophesied what God told him to do, and he opened the heavens. Hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. Hallelujah. Yeah. Hallelujah. Heal the land, open the heavens, mm-hmm. the, death, the Holy Spirit came out. So this is really an important message. How do you open? How do you open these uh, floodgates? Uh, floodgates? And it's going to be the prophetic voice mm-hmm. uh, that's going to open them. Now we said, uh, we saw in John uh, 3 verses 21 and 22, and I'm just going to highlight a couple of things out of these. No, I don't have it. Mm-hmm. But it just said, uh, they came to John and they said, who are you? And his response, and this is verse uh, 23, mm-hmm. he said, I, I am, am the, the voice. voice. Ooh, I, I am, am the voice. voice. So I want to ask you, if Hallelujah. people come to you and, and, and ask you who you are, what is going to be your response? I, I am, am the, the voice. voice. I'm the voice of God in the wilderness. Prepare the way of the Lord. See, Prepare he, the way of the Lord. He, he stripped everything. Uh, he stripped it all down. He humbled himself. I'm the voice. Woo, glory. Do you see yourself as the voice that's going to bring forth Jesus? that's going to bring forth the mm-hmm, outpouring. Mm-hmm. Are you going to be the voice? Mm-hmm, oh, hallelujah. Mm-hmm. There's no oh, higher. Hallelujah. He, he, Jesus said, there's nobody higher than John. There's nobody higher Hallelujah. than the voice. Nobody higher. Oh, no prophet higher. No how no prophet greater than the voice. Oh, praise oh, the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Are you the voice? Yes. That's who we are. We're his voice. See, he needs partners. God needs partners on this earth. He I see it. fire. Fire is going <clears throat> through each one of you right now in the name of Jesus. I see it just going through every person. Uh, oh, and then, oh, hallelujah. I see the fire. I see its flames. I see it igniting us in Jesus' name. I see that he's given you new purpose. I see that he's given you new vision, that he's given you a hope uh, that you've not had. Oh, praise the name of Jesus. That fire is going through this group right now. The Receive voice. the voice. Hallelujah. The voice. If you just see yourself Thank as you, Jesus. the voice. Oh, hallelujah. Nothing higher. Nothing higher than understanding. You're the voice. They ask him, who are you? I'm the voice. Mm. I am the, the voice. voice. Woo. And then Isaiah uh, 40 verse 3 explains that voice. I believe I've got that written down here. If you see that Isaiah The 40. voice of him that crieth <clears throat> in the wilderness. Prepare you the way of the Lord. Make straight <clears throat> in the desert a highway for our God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I'm the voice in the wilderness. Why would somebody go to the wilderness to be the voice in the wilderness? Because that's what Joel said. We've got to prophesy to the land. Uh, There's got to be healing in the land. Mm. We've got to prophesy to the wild animals. Now, now see, I didn't didn't have the uh, understanding about how important the land is and what how the land gets involved. But I saw something uh, a long time ago when when the Lord said, let your land, you, you can uh, farm on your land and produce crops on your land for six years. But on the seventh year, let it lie idle. Let it have rest. a rest. And he said, the land, land enjoys, enjoys its rest. The land enjoys its rest. 
Oh, hallelujah. 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 And uh, you would think, well, Second Chronicles would say, well, okay, <clears throat> if my people who are called by my name will humble themselves and pray, turn from their wicked way, I will hear from heaven, and, and I'm going to pour out blessings on the people. No, he didn't say that. He said, I'm going to heal the land. When you do that, now see, I'm sure everybody's quoted that verse a lot of times. Mm -hmm. When my people who are called by my name mm -hmm. will humble themselves and pray and turn from their wicked ways, I will hear from heaven. He didn't say, I'm going to answer their prayers, whatever they ask. He, he said, I'm going to heal, heal the land. The land. The land is important. We yeah. need to heal the land. John the Baptist went down there to prophesy to the land, prophesy to those boulders, prophesy to those trees, mm -hmm. prophesy, prophesy, mm -hmm. because that's what a prophet does. Yes. And nobody's greater than John the Baptist. No prophet's been greater than John the Baptist, but you, uh, who are the least, least in, in the, the kingdom, kingdom, are greater, greater than, than John. Him. Oh, hallelujah. hallelujah. I hope you see that you are the voice. Yes. And you go where God sends you. Hallelujah. And then you open up the heavens. Oh, praise oh, hallelujah. God. Hallelujah. Open the floodgates. Open the floodgates. See, we've got a, this message is about opening those floodgates and, and keeping them open. Now, I want to tell you that uh, here's heaven and here's earth and heaven's up there above earth and, and there's a gap in between. There's a gap in between, mm -hmm. and what God wants is for that gap to be filled with his, with his glory. glory. That's called the glory zone. Now, we can walk in the glory zone, and we can operate in the glory zone, and, and that's where... That's where the gifts will operate intensely, where there'll be very powerful gifts operating. And so if you're interested in operating in the gifts, you need to understand the glory and how to walk in the glory. And uh, uh, I want Sherry to read uh, from Ezekiel. Do I have a verse there from Ezekiel uh, 22, I believe it is, um, that I've looked, mm -hmm. I've looked for a man. One man. Mm -hmm. I searched for a man. Looked all over for one man. Mm -hmm. One. Mm -hmm. Among them who would build up a wall and stand in the gap before me for the land. Woo -hoo -hoo. The gap. See, here's the gap. Here's heaven. Here's earth. There's a gap. And God wants to pour out his glory mm -hmm. there. Mm -hmm. And he's looked for a person. One person. Yeah, one person. Just one. He didn't look for ten. He just wants one. Will you stand? in the gap mm, hallelujah, and, and keep it safe, build up a wall mm -hmm, because mm -hmm. there's somebody else that wants to be in that place and mm -hmm. that's the devil mm -hmm. and, and uh, spiritual wickedness in mm -hmm. high places mm -hmm. in, in the gap. And, and so you've got, uh, you've got principalities and powers and spiritual wickedness and they all want control of the gap. Uh, you think about Daniel for a moment. Daniel sees so over in Babylon and he prays a prayer and it goes up and God hears it and immediately sends an answer, but it takes three weeks to come back. Why does it keep coming? Why does it take 21 three days. weeks to come back? Because there is opposition, spiritual mm -hmm. wickedness mm -hmm. that opposed that coming down. Mm -hmm. God wants to pour out the glory. Hallelujah. 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 He wants all of us to be walking in the glory zone. Hallelujah. And that's where your gifts are going to be operating. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So be with us in these series because yeah, they're important about how to operate your gifts. We're going to be uh, mentoring and teaching, instructing about the gifts, but they operate in the glory zone uh, when the glory is poured out. And that's what we're talking about here, the glory being poured out. And we saw, we saw that you have to do some prophetic, uh, prophetic speaking and prophetic intercession. So he's looking for somebody who's going to do prophetic intercession to keep those, uh, the, that gap open so the glory can pour out and the enemy is attacking there. It's in that a realm is where the enemy is setting up camp and he's setting up camp a lot of places and and putting a, a cap over the land and mm -hmm. over the God's people so they're not walking in the glory. But it's going right, to take right. it's going to take the uh, prophetic utterances and prophetic intercession, see, 
to, to knock the spiritual wickedness because we wrestle not with flesh and blood, but with, with powers and principalities mm -hmm. and spiritual wickedness in high places. That's who we're wrestling with. It's that gap between uh, heaven and earth, and that's where the glory is going to be poured out. But we've got to heal the land. Hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. hallelujah. We're going to have to change. Our hearts are going to have to change. There's got to be some humbling, humbling mm -hmm. of ourselves. Mm -hmm. When you and I humble ourselves and we pray and we turn from our wicked ways. See, that's what John the Baptist came. He said, repent, repent. for the kingdom of heaven is here. Oh, it's near. It's right, here. Right. It's all around us. See, he's prophesying. He's opening up the heavens, and then Jesus is coming along. They're partnering together, and, and, and John baptizes him. And when in the water, when Jesus comes up, the heavens are open. Oh, hallelujah. It wasn't by accident the heavens were open. There, there, was, hmm. there was intercession. There was prophetic utterances given before yeah. the heavens were open. Yeah. And it's important. In your life, over your family, over, over your, your neighborhood, yeah. over your congregation, mm -hmm. that the heavens be opened yeah, up. The, the territory and that God has given you. Whatever that territory is, you can open the heavens because that's what we're talking about in this series. The kingdom outpouring and, and keeping those floodgates open. And, and you and I are the ones that keep it open because the devil the devil wants it closed. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, oh, mm -hmm. he doesn't want any glory coming down. He wants mm -hmm. to possess that place. Yeah, he wants right. to possess that high place. He he doesn't want uh, God uh, to be in charge there. And, and okay, so let's go back to Acts two. Uh, Acts two verse seventeen says, "In the last days." So there's a condition mm -hmm, here, mm -hmm. and I want you to know that whether or not we're in the last days. And so we're going to look at a few verses just to give you an idea of whether or not we are in the last days. And so I'm going to ask Jerry to read uh, 2 Timothy 3. To, let's see if we are in the last days. I'm going to ask her to read the first verse. This is 2 Timothy 3. Mm -hmm. We'll do just verse 1 and 2. There's a lot more you could cover. Mm -hmm. but. but realize this, that in the last days, Difficult times will come. Okay, let's just stop right there. I need because literally what this verse is, this is something we need to know. You must know this. Mm. There are perilous times out there. Perilous. Mm -hmm. Now, wh what did he mean by perilous? You must know this. And I'm talking about literally. This is mm -hmm. what the verse says. Mm -hmm. You must know this. There are perilous times that are out there. And and, and what is that perilous that, that word here that's perilous is also in and this is the only other place it is, is Matthew 28. I mean, uh, Matthew 8, verse 28, when Jesus came out of the boat and there were two uh, men possessed of the devil or demonized, and, and uh, they met him, and uh, they were so fierce, exceeding fierce. That's the perilous times. Uh, the perilous times mm -hmm. that we're in. Mm -hmm. is so if you get close to them, I want you to think about those de uh, men, demonized men, they were, so, and I want to share to read this verse, but it's the same word, it's perilous. Read that verse, uh, Matthew 8, verse 28. Don't I have mm -hmm. that? Yeah. And when he was come to the other side, into the country of the Gadarenes, mm, there met him two possessed with devils, coming out of the tombs, exceeding fierce, so that no man might pass by that way. Okay, so that's the times we're living in. Mm -hmm. That's the time, that's exactly the same word over here in 2 Timothy uh, 3 verse 1 where it says perilous time. If you just get close to them, it, it's going. It's a dangerous zone. Mm -hmm. It's a dangerous place mm -hmm. to be. Uh, and that's in the last days. That's the days that we're living in. And you need to know this. That if you get close uh, to uh, what all the demons want to bring on, uh, the on the world today and on the earth today, it'll it w is damaging. It's harmful to you. Mm -hmm. Just getting close to you, it's perilous times that we're in. Now let's read verse two of Second Timothy mm -hmm. one. Second for, Timothy three. I'm sorry. Verse for two. people will be lovers of self. Is this the days we're in? Mm -mm. Lovers of money, boastful, arrogant, slanderous disobedient to parents, ungrateful, 
and unholy. Oh, hallelujah. You look around the world, that's that's chaos. That's the people mm -hmm. that are around. And it goes on with lots of others. But I just wanted to do a little highlight here and say, yes, we are in the last, last days. days. Amen. These are the kinds of people that are out there in the world. Now, there's one other ver verse I want you to read about this to let you know this is the last days. We are in the last days. And so there's an outpouring of the Holy Spirit that we can expect when we are prophesying and open up those floodgates. All right, read this verse. Mm -hmm. It's the same thing saying, hey, we are in the last days. If you didn't know, we are in the last days. Okay. This is 2 Peter 3.3. 3. Know this first of all, that in the last days, mockers will come with their mocking, following after their own lust. Oh, hallelujah. Yeah, that we're in the last days. Mm -hmm. I, I could go over lots and lots more scriptures, scriptures about we're in the last days, but I just want you to know, and you can search it out yourself. We are in the last days. And and Acts 2, uh, 28, no, 2, 2, 17 says that in the last days, there's going to be an outpouring on all flesh. On all flesh. And, and so we uh, can be a part of that outpouring, but we have a role and a responsibility. God is partnering with us. He's not doing it outside of his body and outside of his family. No, he's doing it with us. And we've seen that it's by prophecy. We've got to be doing some prophetic intercession and prophesying to the land, to the animals, and to the people. We need to be prophesying. Hallelujah. And uh, I have two other verses I want to talk about, uh, and I'm bringing this to a, a closure, but I, I want you to see that uh, there are a couple of things that we don't need to do uh, with respect to the outpouring, but that's going to stop the outpouring. And one is if we grieve the Holy Spirit, and the other is if we quench. And I'm going to talk about those two verses, but let's start with uh, Ephesians 4 and read that verse about grieving the Holy Spirit. And grieve not the Holy Spirit of God, whereby ye are sealed until the day of redemption. Okay, now the opposite of grieving is, <clears throat> excuse me, pleasing. What we need to be doing <clears throat> is pleasing the Holy Spirit. Now, what causes him to grieve? Well, it has a lot to do with our character, our thoughts, what are we doing? So if we're in the in the miry clay, if we're in, if our thoughts are in the, in the darkness or in the evil, and, or if our, our, if our character is not developed, all of that will grieve the Holy Spirit. And what we need is an outpouring of the Holy Spirit. But so one of the instructions is do not grieve the Holy Spirit. So what I'm saying, uh, and this relates to prophecy. It, it, it relates a lot to prophecy because it's about character. And if you don't have character, good character, integrity, and and honesty, and mm. uh, if you don't have those kinds of character the traits, love, love of God. Well, well, then what what good is your word going to mean? Mm -hmm. And so, can anybody trust you if you don't have the character behind it? Uh, and so. We're going to be talking about the gifts here, but see the gifts operate with the character. The character is a is a part of who you are, mm -hmm. uh, your integrity, and and uh, those kinds of things that God puts in you by the Holy Spirit, and, and where you're putting your attention. Are you putting it on worldly things, and you have one foot in the world and one foot in in the, the Lord? No, you, you've got to be sold out to the Lord. If you're going to be giving prophetic words that have meaning, that have life to them, you've got to have the mm -hmm. character behind it to back it up. Okay, so the to keep the floodgates open, we've got to, for one thing, we've got to uh, deal with the uh, evil forces, but we have to have our character. We've got to be godly have a godly mm -hmm. character the other one is don't quench the holy spirit mm -hmm. now this is uh first thessalonians 5 verse 19 i'll ask you to read that mm -hmm. it's pretty short it just says quench not the spirit okay so or try to stop it okay that's the power okay so we've got to have the power coming there's a lot of people and see in the last days they're 
they're going to be confessing that they are Christ, but they're going to uh, they're doing things that are that appear to be godly, but they're resisting. I mean, they're uh, what is it about the power? They're they're uh, denying the denying power. the power. They deny the power. So when you deny the power, that's quenching the Holy Spirit. And we've got to not only have our character, we've got to have our thoughts and and godly behavior, but also we've got to allow the Holy Spirit to move with his free with freedom what he wants to do glory mm -hmm. to god mm -hmm. hallelujah mm -hmm. do not quench the holy spirit do not quench his power put out the fire you cannot do it see there's one coming that's what john the baptist said hallelujah. one coming that's going to baptize you with the holy spirit and fire. fire so we don't want to put out that fire we've got to keep mm -hmm. it going so just this is the first message we've got to open up the floodgates and we open them up prophetically so if we want the outpouring of the holy spirit if you want to operate in the gifts then then we've got to open up the floodgates and of course the the uh heaven is opened over jesus christ and he's in you and so the the heavens are opened over you okay but you need to open them wide keep them open wide Keep them open wide. Be the voice mm -hmm. that's going to keep them open wide. Be Hallelujah. the voice. voice. That's what John the Baptist said when they asked him. Mm -hmm. He just said, I am, am the, the voice. voice. Woo, glory. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank Hallelujah. you for being Hallelujah. here.